I had been getting up in the morning to go to practice, probably since I was like nine or 10. I don't think you can ever get used to getting up this early. It's the start to a typical morning for elite gymnast Jocelyn Robertson. I feel like I just, I know my goals and I know where I wanna get. Um, so, it, and I'm used to it because I've been doing it since I was so little. We are going from 7 a.m. to 5.30. We do get a break in there, but it's hard to like get stuff outside of the gym done sometimes. Um, so yes. you're getting it done on the weekend whenever you can. Um, but I feel like that's the hardest part is just being able to keep up normal life and gymnastics life all at the same time. The daily routine all tailored towards one goal, the Olympic Games in Paris. I just fell in love with watching it on TV and I wanted to be those girls one day. So I feel like working towards that every day is what makes me fall in love with it. I really didn't feel like I was good enough to make it anywhere until I moved to this gym, honestly. And having Cecile Marant, like believe in me and like he would crack jokes with me all the time. Like he was cracking jokes in the gym today, but he would crack jokes. He was like, when you're at Worlds next year, you're gonna have to do this. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like I didn't think it would be a thing. This was before Winter Cup of last season. And then Winter Cup started and then I feel like it was just like a, a ball that started rolling and I just got better and better and better. And I ended up making Worlds and I was like, wow, like I really did that. Never in a million years would I think that that would have happened last year, but I'm so grateful. What was it about Arkansas for you? Just like the coaching staff. I mean, Jordan, she's been my favorite gymnast since I was like three years old. Arkansas really wasn't on the plate when I was thinking about college. I was like, mm, no, like not. But I was like, but I want to talk to Jordan, so I'm going to call her. I cannot believe I'm talking to you. <laughs> like, you've been my favorite gymnast since I was three. I just remember watching you on TV and I was like, I, I have to be her one day. The head coach of Razorback Gymnastics, Jordan Weaver. A member of the Fierce Five at the 2012 Olympics, Jordan Weaver's path has kept her around the sport she loves. I think coaching really fills that, that gap of missing gymnastics and competing. The first couple years after I retired, it was really hard for me to be at a meet and not be out there performing. We're gonna warm up really, really well. We're gonna get into two groups. One group on bars, one group on beam, and then a couple others that won't be on bars and beam will do a little bit of floor. Brings back memories, yeah. For sure, yeah. I haven't pulled these ones out in a while. The goal of being an Olympian really popped into my mind when I watched the um, 2004 Olympics. That was when I knew, I was nine at the time. That was when I uh, really decided, like, that is my goal, that is my dream. But I'll, I will be honest with you, like, I didn't say that out loud. I didn't talk about it a lot. I didn't even really think about it a lot because as a gymnast, you know, you really are just like, okay, what is the next step? What is the next competition? And you're looking, like, too far behind you. You need to look, like, directly to the side. Yeah, it's been good. We're getting ready for selection. She's very team-oriented. That is the way her brain works. Um, I've texted her a few times when she's been you know, overseas competing internationally and, and she will always say, you know, team is my first priority and I'm just so excited to, to, to compete with my team. Five girls in the whole world make the USA Worlds team, you know? So I was, I was soaking up every aspect that I could. Hello. During the World Championships in 2023, Robertson injured her foot while warming up on the vault. I land short and I was like, yeah, that's not fine. How are we feeling today? Pretty good. Yeah. It was really tight when I woke up this morning. Having that realization that you physically cannot do that, like it makes me emotional now. Just because I've wanted it so bad. And just realizing physically I cannot do it, when two seconds ago I could. Even just watching it on TV, just seeing how, the way she got injured in the warm up and then bounced back and was out there and cheering for her team and, and um, being the best teammate she could be in that moment. That is a huge sign of character. Battling through an injury is just as much mental as it is physical. The journey she is navigating day by day. I feel like just having her there makes it so much easier. I mean, 
I don't have to explain what I'm going through. She already knows. She's already been through it. Kyla, too. I mean, and Chris, they are all Olympians. So, like, I can call up any of them and be like, I'm just not feeling it. And they can, they'll understand. Taking the small victories, as I said, is like the one thing I really had to learn how to do. Um, because I went from not being able to stand on it to tumbling and vaulting in three months. I know that any Olympic journey, um, team or not, is a really difficult one. And I'll be proud of her no matter what. If she makes the team, I am just probably going to cry out of excitement. It would be interesting for me because I've, I've never been that close to someone who has competed just after me in my footsteps. So I think it'll be cool to see that through the eyes of her. Just to be there and say that I made it. And that little girl was right when she said she was going to be there when she said she was going to make it.